What is the trigger for a successful person's career? It's a constantly fascinating question. In Maggie Adair in Pocock's case, a crucial factor was a children's television program featuring some soft toys who lived on a distant planet and communicated with each other in high-pitched fluting sounds. The clangers captured her imagination at the age of three, and this was reinforced by Star Trek as she grew older. Mesmerized by the moon, as she puts it, by the age of 15, she was making her own telescope, grinding the lens herself because a shop bought one was inadequate. All true, but of course, this is not the whole story. Maggie's considerable achievements as a scientist and communicator and an inspirer in her own right have more sophisticated origins. Maggie was born in London in 1968. Her parents had recently migrated from Nigeria and her childhood could hardly be described as smooth. She encountered racism, which in her positive way, she describes as teasing rather than bullying. She was dyslexic which held back her progress at school. She was a girl, and so seen by her teachers as better suited to a nursing than a scientific career. And the breakup of her parents' marriage when she was very young resulted in her attending 13 schools in the course of 14 years. Maggie is not a person to be defeated by such challenges or to be resentful. On the contrary, she says the experiences have made her adaptable and she has addressed racial, gender, and social stereotypes with a determination to prove herself and to support others in addressing them with resilience and good humor. Despite that disrupted schooling and encouraged in her studies by her father, she won a place to read physics at Imperial College, followed by a PhD in mechanical engineering involving the development of an ultra-thin film measurement system using spectroscopy and interferometry. And she met her husband, Martin, in the process. Her research led to a job at the Defense Evaluation and Research Agency, where she worked first as a systems scientist on aircraft missile warning systems, and then as project manager developing handheld instruments to detect landmines. In 1999, she returned to Imperial College to work with the group developing a high-resolution spectrograph for the Gemini Telescope in Chile. It was a far cry from that modest homemade lens 16 years earlier to the sophisticated 8.1 meter mirror lens high up in the lonely Chilean Andes. But the dream was the same, to get the best possible vision of the entire sky, not excluding, of course, the moon. This was followed by posts with Surrey satellites and with Astrium, where she led the team responsible for developing optical systems for use on satellites. A successful career in research and in the UK space industry has, however, not been the whole story. With Martin, she set up Science Innovations Limited, and that has been the vehicle for giving imaginative presentations, including simulated space journeys, to many thousands of school children, with the aim of inspiring new generations of scientists and engineers and in the process, correcting those assumptions about what black girls can achieve. The worthy but unimaginatively, unimaginatively named UK DMC2 Earth Imaging Satellite was turned under Maggie's guidance into Blue Peter 1 in a project which enabled children to see the satellite being made, its launch into orbit, and the images it takes, giving those people an insight into how our planet is changing. So it was only natural that, as an outstandingly lucid and likable interpreter of science, Maggie was chosen in 2014 as one of the co-presenters of The Sky at Night. She is a worthy successor to the late Sir Patrick Moore, a close friend of this university, who himself stood on this stage to receive an honorary degree in 1996 and a distinguished honorary fellowship in 2008. Maggie lists stargazing as one of her main recreations. Her childhood ambition to get to the moon may now have dimmed, but she has a daughter who may yet have that opportunity. Meanwhile, her contributions and achievements are widely recognized. She was appointed MBE in 2009 for services to science education. 
She has been listed as one of the UK's 10 most influential black people. Her work has been recognized by the Yale University Center for Dyslexia, and she is an honorary fellow of the British Science Association, to select only a few examples. This is not the first honorary degree that Maggie has received, but I venture to suggest that no university is better qualified to award one to her. As the founders of the National Space Center, we share Maggie's commitment to inspiring interest in science through the wonders of space. As developers of Space Park Leicester, we have a common interest in space research and the development of the UK space industry. And as leading academic part participants in the He for She initiative, we are united in our commitment to equality of opportunity. Rarely, therefore, can it have been more appropriate to welcome a new honorary graduate among us. Mr. Chancellor, on the recommendation of the Senate and the Council, I present Margaret Ebunalua Aderin Pocock that you may confer upon her the honorary degree of Doctor of Science. First of all, I'd like to say what an honour it is to be here today and to be here for part of this celebration. I'm sitting on the stage, I've seen so many of you come up and the whoops and the joys and the yeah! This is the culmination of all your hard work. So I congratulate each and every one of you. Well done. I think a round of applause. But of course, you have done all the hard work, but you've had some support from friends, from parents, from people here today who are whooping and cheering with you. So they're celebrating too. So congratulations to them. And of course, the academics who have steered you on your course to get you here today. Congratulations to them too. So I am so honoured. <laughs> Now, Leicester University is sort of celebrating 100 years. Actually, I'm celebrating half 100 years because I just turned 50. So um, I think we've got quite a bit in common. But I think it is just a wonderful place to be. And one of the other uh, sort of um, milestones this year is 100 years since women got the vote. And one of the things that I was so excited about was seeing so many female scientists coming through. So many scientists in general, but so many female scientists. We need you. And each and every one of you is a role model. Um, I spend a lot of my time going out to school kids and telling them about the wonders of science. Please do the same. We need more scientists here in the UK and across the world. You are fantastic role models. You have learnt so much. So go out there and spread the word. Tell people about the excitement of STEM. And speaking of the excitement of STEM, um, I got here last night, but I arrived at 2.30 in the morning. And I must admit, I was knackered. <laughs> But one of the things I was noticing, and one of the things that has been the joy of the clear skies we've been having recently and the brilliant weather, is at the moment you can see a number of planets in the night sky. So early in the evening, I, I, I couldn't see a, um, Mercury myself, but Mercury is low on the horizon as the sun is setting. And then if you, if you see a brilliant, what looks like a star, it's actually the planet Venus following the sun down as it goes. And then also in the night skies is Saturn, Jupiter, and um, also Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars. Mars I saw late as I was arriving last night. So there's amazing things to see in the night sky. And it's quite interesting, because um, this is um, an honorary degree that I'm receiving from Leicester University. And Leicester University is the place of, of space science. You have the Leicester Space Centre. And I've filmed there many times, and I've taken my daughter there and had hours of fun. And of course, the research that's going on here in the university is amazing. Uh, mentioning each of those planets, Mercury, um, um, a project called Bepi Colombo has been launched towards Mercury in the very near future. And um, Mars, um, 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 Leicester University was involved in the sort of research uh, of Beagle 2, which actually landed on the Mars surface. Um, when I was filming Sky at Night here just a few weeks ago, we were talking about Juno, um, a probe in orbit around Jupiter, taking fantastic images which blow my mind. And Saturn, the amazing Cassini spacecraft, which was in orbit around Saturn for a number of years and plunged into Saturn's depths uh, just last year. 
So we have an amazing heritage here in Leicester of space and, and, and science, and it's a, a, a fantastic, um, it's just very exciting to be part of that. But um, as we were saying, um, it's 100 years uh, since Leicester uh, was formed, and it was formed after the First World War. I, I wasn't aware of that before. But it's sometimes out of tribulations and trials, wonders can come. And I think Leicester University is a wonder that came out of that tribulation. And in some ways, we are going through trials and tribulations again. We have the challenges of Brexit. We have Trump. Okay, <laughs> not to get political. But I think out of this, new life can be formed, and that new life is you. We have challenges to face in this world, but you are the people to face them, to get to grips with climate change, to get to grips and help us understand what's going on out there. And so with the um, uh, science park, um, the space park being uh, built as we speak, it is an exciting time to be here in Leicester. So to each and every one of you, I give you my sincere congratulations. And um, I'd like to say, um, in the words of um, uh, Star Trek, um, uh, not go forth and multiply, but live long and prosper. <laughs> Thank you very much.